pretty much how I decided what painting I wanted to do this week. This one! So this painting you see here is Night with Hand on His Chest, which is painted by El Greco, aka Domenico C. Decapolis, around 1580. And it now hangs in the Prado Museum in Madrid. And the Prado also contains many works by Velasquez, Goya, Rubens, and Durer. El Greco, who was an artist that was born in Crete and was later trained in Venice, eventually settled down and founded a studio in Toledo, Spain. And as you probably will remember from last week, the city is rich with history, particularly religious and civil history, as in that of the wealthy middle class. Knight with hand on his chest was painted when El Greco was about 40 years old, and he also painted the burial of Count Orgaz in this decade too. El Greco, although he was initially trained as an icon painter, is considered a mannerist. His bodies are elongated and ghostly looking, and his backgrounds are not completely of this world, and his colors are usually dark and stormy. This color scheme, which El Greco favorited, is evident in this image, Knight with hand on his chest. The whole painting is just one variation of gray or black, and the only light source comes from the illuminated, or the barely illuminated face, of the knight. I thought this coloring was similar to that of Tintoretto, who is also a Venetian painter, and he painted The Last Supper, which we also looked at last week. However, who exactly is the so-called knight? Although his specific identity is not known, the viewer can be sure that he is either taking an oath or otherwise professing his loyalty to his profession as a knight. We can see his sword at the bottom and also a fine gold chain on his tunic. However, the role of a knight during the Renaissance was different than the stereotypical medieval knight that everyone thinks of. You know, the ones that fought on horseback, used a sword to chop off some hands and heads, and was part of the Crusades. The Renaissance Knight didn't actually fight in combat very often. The position was more ceremonial and reserved for the wealthier and the middle classes that emerged during the Renaissance. And it's because of these emerging classes that smaller individual works could be commissioned for artists like El Greco. Subject is also looking out directly at the viewer. He's confronting us emotionlessly as if demonstrating his seriousness. And I thought the face of the knight here almost looked like that of El Greco's in the burial of Count Orgaz. So could this be a self-portrait? According to the web gallery of art, this website I was looking at, this uh, painting was supposed to be a portrait of Juan da Silva, who was the mayor of Toledo at the time that El Greco was painting this. However, El Greco supposedly changed his mind and painted a random knight instead. Unusually, this work does not depict a heavenly scene, which El Greco tended to do, such as in the burial of Count Orgaz again. And El Greco also had a massive impact on later artists, including modern ones such as Picasso, Manet, Cezanne, and Delacroix. So I hope you enjoyed this video and watch out for my next ones. Countrymen, lend me your ears! Are you fascinated with Roman history? I think the reigns of Trajan and Hadrian are the coolest things since microwavable bug brownies? When's the last time a collection of short stories truly tickled your fancy? Well, I have an intellectual solution for you. There we go. I know, no, no, at you.